question is from Amelia Jude RD. What do you think of the health at any size movement? It's, false. Yeah. Just it's flat out fucking false. It's totally it, at any size. That's not. No, that's, that's why not that's true. false. Yeah, that's not. Can you be bigger and be healthier than somebody who's skinny? Hundred percent. Totally. Hundred percent. I can have somebody who is, let's say, thirty pounds of body or thirty percent body fat, which is you know heading up towards the quote unquote obese area, right? For a male at least, and uh, I can have that person, and they could definitely be technically healthier. Uh, than the the same size or the same height male who's at five uh, percent body fat. Uh, so you know what they what they're doing, what they're intaking, uh, drugs, mental uh, stuff that's going on, their behavior. I mean, there's so many factors that constitute what makes us healthy or unhealthy. That absolutely you can be bigger, a little bit heavier, or carry more body fat than somebody else, and and technically yeah. be healthier, but. To say that health at any size is a crock of shit because Such a general statement if, to if, make. If you are morbidly obese or even just obese for that matter, you're unhealthy. There you're, are, and you're unhealthier than the version of you that is thirty that is twenty percent less body fat. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. So there's there's definitely a range that your body weight can be, and you can have uh, equally good health. Like you could be a man with good behaviors, good eating habits, good exercise at 18% body fat, or you could be at 10% body fat, good behaviors, good exercise, everything's the same, and except you eat more when you're 18% than you're, and you'll find that your health is pretty much uh, the same. It's, it's pretty damn good. But at some point, regardless of your behaviors, at some point, when you gain so much, you gain too much body fat, at some point, your health always suffers. Yeah. Now, you can definitely be morbidly obese and be healthier than, and be morbidly obese and be less healthier. But a morbidly obese version of yourself is not going to be as healthy as a healthy version of yourself that's not morbidly obese. The only thing I agree with this is uh, that basically, like, you, you, you shouldn't be determining somebody's health based off their aesthetics. I mean, like, you, it's a good indication that, you know, some things are going right in terms of, like, you know, body fat and co overall composition. But, you know, there's a lot more factors to being healthy than just, you know, looking good. But at the same time, like, that doesn't mean that, you know, just everybody in every shape and size is healthy. Like, you have to determine determine that for yourself and then like go through the whole list of, you know, what, what are all those markers look like? Well, there, there's a line here. Okay. There's a line here there, there, you absolutely like what Sal was saying. Uh, I allow myself to fluctuate. Um, I've been as, uh, and the irony of it is when I'm on stage and probably what the average person, oh my God, he's ripped. And he, and that would be this greatest expression of health. No, I'm I'm unhealthy at three percent. Probably I'm more unhealthy at three percent than what I am at seventeen percent. Sure. Okay. So there is definitely a wide range here. But if I kept going to thirty, you know, or, or twenty, twenty five, twenty eight percent body fat, no, no, I'm not healthy anymore. And that is, and the way my body looks at that point is a reflection of my health. I'm not. I'm not taking care of myself nutritionally, therefore I'm carrying an excessive amount of body fat on my body, I am no longer a healthy version of myself, and the way I look is a reflection of that. There is a line here, and it's, and I understand where this movement came from because uh, I, I know that we we shouldn't be judging. I know we shouldn't be idolizing, uh, you know, women that are on uh, Calvin Klein ads twenty years ago that were probably smoking cigarettes and starving themselves. They're just as unhealthy as the newest Calvin Klein article where the girl is on there and probably two hundred and eighty pounds. Neither one of them, though, are truly healthy. Yeah, you know, no, that's a, that's an excellent point. And I, I get the sentiment. You know, you you want people to focus on their health and not necessarily on their size. That's 100% true, by the way. That's, a, that's something that I promote all the time. If you chase health, then your aesthetics uh, will follow. And if you chase aesthetics, oftentimes you'll lose your health, and then the downstream effects of that are you'll lose uh, your aesthetics. And, you know, Justin's right. You can't look at some – I mean, you, we learned this about performance. You guys, you know, in, in mixed martial arts, there was a fighter, Fedor Emelianenko. This guy was uh, undefeated for a long time. He looked chubby. Look like a chubby dude. He'd get in the ring with the, or the cage with dudes that were shredded. 
and he'd put them to sleep. He'd knock them out or break their arm or whatever. Oh, look at yeah. uh, look at our guy here in San Jose, the, like four time champion. Kane Velasquez. No, not oh. Kane. Well, but Kane's an example yeah. too. Uh, what, what, has one a new the, boxer? No, mm. it's he's. Uh, how can you not think of his name right now? He's a uh, black guy. He's and he's oh, super. Oh, Comir. Comir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. one of the one of the best dominant. You know, oh yeah, not only is he dominant, but that he's known for his cardio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his endurance is incredible. His strength is is incredible. He's 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 healthier than what yeah. he probably uh, yeah. looks aesthetically. There, so, there's definitely a health at a large range of sizes. That's what they should say. It doesn't sound so cool though, does it? It's not very marketable to say that. But the reality is there is good health at a range of sizes, but there isn't health at any size. At some point, uh, excess body fat. Body fat is a hormone-sensitive tissue. There are effects from having too much body fat on your body, regardless of your diet and exercise. And having too much of it will negatively impact your health, regardless. Oh, and, of yeah, I, and again, I'm not like I. I think that we should all strive to be better, like the better version of ourselves. So I, I always think that that is going to come out, like you said, when you're bettering yourself, your body is going to be a reflection of that. So I do feel strongly about that. I just want to, like, you know, if somebody is you know, unhealthy and they're working on themselves. Like you don't always know the full story either. They may be like way more healthy and, and been improving what, totally. you know, they started out with. And so, you know, like you just, it, to me, like these general statements are so irritating because it, it becomes like uh, distorted, you know, and then the message becomes like, uh, th this sort of movement to you know, well, I'm I'm this size and I'm I'm good, you know, and it just becomes a complacency thing. Well, and it's a it's a very dangerous um, message, I think, for the generation coming up. Um, I used to keep this article. I wish I remember the stats off the top of my head. I know they were extremely alarming though. On if you were under the age of ten and you were already in the obese category, which by the way. What people think is obese uh, and what really is obese is is alarming in itself. I mean, we have, what, 60% of our country is already considered clinically obese? Well, it's, I know overweight. I think obese is made over 50%. Yeah. No, no, no. Obese is not over 50%. But, Wrong. We look that up. It's up it, higher than that? No, it's lower than that. It's only like 30-something percent. Look it up. It's wait, wait, not, less than 30% of Americans? Oh, no, I'm telling you that that there's more than half the Americans are considered clinically obese. Right, right, right. That's what I'm yes, saying to you yes, right yes. now. Yeah, so, you, and and I used to have a, a, a study that I had kept on my wall by my office at, at the gym, and it talked about if you were under the age of 10 and already clinically obese, uh, how many years that shaves off your life if you're under the age of 20, if you're under the age of 30, and it had this, like, you know, obviously, the younger you are and already in that category, the more damaging this is for you long term. Oh, dude, uh, girls are, are starting puberty way earlier because their mm. body fat is so mm -hmm. high. It's a hormone sense. It's a yeah. hormone sensitive tissue. Boys are getting estrogenic uh, signs and lower testosterone as a result. Um, and I just looked it up right now. Clinical obesity is uh, almost 40%. Overweight is a majority, so there's like overweight, and then obese is is a higher percentage. Okay, yeah, obese so, is forty percent. Yeah, or, or, yeah. And are they basing that off BMI? Because you know, I yes, have an issue with that. They do, and that's a good point. Um, they do because I, I mean, obviously, they're not going to go around testing. Right. They well, they could, they should, they should. They're going off of body weight, um, but it, generally speaking, um, and looking at trends, it's relatively accurate. Yeah. Here's the more accurate part. The number's going up, so we know that for a fact. We know that it's increasing. Yeah, we're going the wrong direction. We know that. Um, I mean, God, when I first became a trainer 20 years ago, uh, they called uh, type 2 diabetes adult-onset diabetes. That was yeah. what they taught us. They said there were two types of diabetes, type 1 and adult-onset diabetes. The reason why they called it adult-onset was because- No kids had it. Your, yeah, your lifestyle gave you diabetes as an adult. They changed it to type 2 because so many kids started getting it, it was silly to call it adult-onset, and they said, oh, this is now type 2 Diabetes. So, and again, um, why I don't like a message like that. If we're already skewed in that direction, and that's something that we've watched just in the two decades of us training clients, mm -hmm. like where are we going to be ten years and ten years from now with a message like this, letting letting young kids that are growing up think that it's okay and you can be healthy at all sizes? You're right. Like, no, you need to communicate. It's not a great message. What needs to be communicated isn't hate your body. Right. You're, you're overweight. You're obese. Hate your body. It's hey, you're obese. Let's love your body. Let's take care of it in the realest sense. And then let's watch what that looks like. Let's Love watch yourself by improving. That's it. Totally.